Speaker Paul Ryan has closed out the 2016 Republican National Convention. Mike Carter here along with Dean Kaplan, Dean of the Newhouse School. Dean, uh, what did you think of this week? So from tonight, his words were, it's time to show the world that America is back, it's bigger and better than ever. What were your thoughts? First of all, I thought his speech was probably the best speech I've heard him give all during the whole campaign season. He was measured, he was quiet. Body language might was a little weird at times, but for the most part, it was very strong. Um, and I thought he hit all the points that he wanted to hit, so I thought that was very good for him. He had a great uh, intro by his daughter, Ivanka. A lot of people were looking forward to Ivanka Trump speaking. She gave an intro saying tonight that, judge my father by the results of his career. Now, obviously a career fraught with ups and downs, what did you think about that sentiment? I thought she had a great speech, but if you had closed your eyes, you would have thought the speech was next week. Because she was talking about equal pay for women, she was talking about parental leave, some of the core issues of the Democratic Party. But I think that was smart, you know? You have a convention, you try to get the nomination, then you want to move to the center. So I think he's really trying to do that, and I think um, he'll be pretty effective. On the other hand, I thought Trump really resurrected Richard Nixon today. I mean, he was going to be the law and order president. And given what's been happening in the country, it really was reminiscent of 1968. The question is, is this the same country we had in 1968? Absolutely. Donald Trump saying tonight, quote, on January 20th, 2017, the day I take the oath of office, Americans will finally wake up in a country where the laws of the United States are in force. Now when it comes to, obviously this summer has been the summer of a lot of strife within communities of color and the police. Is Donald Trump the candidate, in your opinion, to bring America back and bring to America think, as one again? I think that's what remains to be seen and that's what the fall campaign will be about. You know, it is a little troubling. He just spent a lot of time talking about police and then we have to have the police back and I think there's nothing wrong with that. But you know, there's been a lot of people who died at the hands of police unjustifiably. Not a word about them, including one this today, which is an innocent social worker was shot, which now has been said that was an accident, but was shot in cold blood by a police officer. You can support the police, but also support the victim of police brutality. It's worth noting that the, a lot of concern coming into Cleveland was about security and about police and about protesters. Really no issues to report of, uh, nothing that we could find. We did a story, story earlier in the week about uh, the Trump hut protest. That was a peaceful protest and uh, you had police force, forces from across the country, from as far away as California. Uh, in town, marching uh, in scores of police. And no matter where you went, uh, officers, from my estimate, were kind. They were waving to people, pe taking selfies with uh, with convention goers. Uh, so, hats off to the Cleveland Police Department for keeping everyone safe. There was really no security issues whatsoever uh, to speak of. No, and I didn't see hear about any real protests that got out of hand. Although there was one incident during his speech that caused uh, Donald Trump to stop. I think uh, I read that was someone from Code Pink was disruptive. I didn't see what was on her sign, but there were a lot of police there and they escorted her out pretty swiftly. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, obviously a businessman, and uh, a lot of people, a lot of speakers tonight echoed the sentiments of uh, when he has, puts his mind to something, uh, he gets it done. He's uh, going to eliminate waste. He said in the first hundred days, uh, he will go to every department in the United States government and ask them to provide a list of wasteful spending so he can cut down on uh, the excess waste in the government. Uh, definitely a different candidate that has, than has been seen in presidential politics in recent years. Would you agree? Yes and no. I mean, the problem with this speech, and again, it was a very good speech, it was long on platitudes and very short on how he was going to accomplish it. He kept saying that on the first day, you know, this problem will be gone, and that problem will be gone. We won't have illegal immigration. We'll have law and order. How? How are we going to do that? We're going to have new trade agreements. How? How is he going to do that? 
What's the policy prescription? What's the process in which to do all these things? He also said that uh, Donald Trump said that he will replace Obamacare with something new, something better, to your point. Uh, still no details into how he's going to do that, but uh, are you confident that he does have a plan in mind? Oh, no. I don't think any, I don't think any politician has a plan. I don't think any Republican has a plan. They have a plan to get rid of Obamacare. I have yet to see it or read about a credible plan to replace it. Donald Trump also thanked the evangelical and religious community that has backed him throughout the campaign, saying, I'm not sure I totally deserve it. Uh, that drew, drew a chuckle from the crowd. Uh, and also talked about Hillary Clinton's, uh, her statement saying that I'm with her. That has kind of been her campaign uh, slogan throughout her campaign. Uh, his response to that is, I'm with you. Uh, whether that is a strong enough campaign slogan to make it through November it remains to be seen. Well, I know he said this before, but I really thought it was probably the most effective line of the speech. I mean, I think that's where he draws the contract, contrast between himself and, and Hillary Clinton, is that it's all about her, according to him, whereas he's for them. The funny aspect of that is that most people critical of the Trump campaign see him as the narcissist, and it's all being about him. So it's kind of a flipping the switch. I love the evangelical shout out because at the end of the convention, he's up there with five children from three different mothers. Not really probably a focus of the evangelical movement. Yep. And, and the other part of that is that not one word about abortion, not one word about gay marriage, although there was a shout out of, for the LGBTQ community and he thanked the audience for actually cheering him. So the, the issues that the evangelicals really think are important he really didn't touch it. Something that I noticed uh, throughout the last four days, you had a lot of speakers from diverse backgrounds. You had a lot of women, a lot of women within the Trump organization saying that they've been able to move up and move up quickly to positions of uh, vice presidents, presidents, CEOs within the Trump organization. You had a uh, diverse, you had a pastor, a black pastor tonight who gave a, uh, a raucous speech and really fired up the crowd early. But when you notice the convention itself, not too many faces other than uh, those that kind of look like Donald Trump. Would you agree? I, I absolutely agree. And I, I've been coming to conventions and watching conventions for a long time. And this is the least diverse convention I've ever seen, both in the terms of the delegates and in terms of the attendees. I, I can safely tell you that there were more minority reporters than there were minority delegates or visitors here. And, you know, it, within the arena, it didn't seem to make any difference, but I don't know how it plays out there amongst the general public who will, notice, who, who will notice things like that. The other point I'd like to make is that I think Ivanka did a great job, as well as the film about the people who work there, about how he pays them equally. But I think the Boston Globe actually did uh, analyze campaign finance reports and found out that in the campaign, the men were being paid one-third more than the women. Interesting, yeah. interesting. So where do we go from here? For Republicans, uh, the convention is now over. Donald Trump is the nominee. There was some uh, little tension earlier on in the week about Ted Cruz delegates not getting on board, but what's done is done. We move on to the Democratic convention in Philadelphia starting on Monday. Uh, what are you looking forward to as far as uh, the DNC? Well, where you and I go from here is to Philadelphia. Um, I think what will happen is that in the next day, maybe Saturday, but I believe probably Friday, it starts the Democrats with Hillary announcing who her vice presidential choice is. And then they'll do the full court press. To me, what will be interesting is how much the Republicans and Donald Trump try to upstage them during the week of their of their convention. How would he do that? Well, he could he could he could do what Gore and Clinton did, have a bus trip through the Midwest. And you know, and the truth of the matter is it doesn't take much for Trump to get attention because he is very good at getting attention. The other thing is, will he can keep the tone of the speech, which, although pretty tough on Hillary, was much less vicious, I think, than some of his other speeches, A, during the primaries and also recently. Or will he revert to the old Donald where he'll start calling her lying Hillary and that kind of stuff. I think that's what we have to see. But to me, the interesting thing is, will they give the Democrats a free ride for this week? The Democrats pretty much gave the Republicans a free ride. Where the Republicans ran into trouble was by their own doing this week, not by anything the Democrats. Was this week a success for the GOP? 
I think yes. I think it was very rocky. I think um, that uh, you know when you're in the middle of it, it looks like oh my God, they blew the speech, the Ted Cruz thing. But all is said and done, the thing people are going to remember is the speech, and I think it was a, a pretty powerful speech. So we move on to Philadelphia on Monday. Hillary Clinton set to announce her vice president. Maybe within hours from now, it is Thursday night, and uh, we're expecting uh, an announcement at some point tomorrow, Friday, and we'll know uh, going into Philadelphia, the whole Clinton team, as we head towards November. Towards and, yeah, are you ready to pack up your equipment and get moving? I am ready to pack up my equipment and get going. Okay, okay. Philadelphia, yeah. city of brotherly love, here we come. Goodbye, Cleveland. For Goodbye, Dean Goodbye, Joel Lebron. Kaplan, I'm Mike Carter. Goodbye, for Elections Unpeeled, live here in Cleveland, signing off. Come on.